Hello everybody, welcome to Mojo Talks, and this is Watch Club, the show where we break down the biggest shows on television. I am your host, Matt, my guest, Phoebe, as usual, and we're gonna talk about Westworld Season 2, Episode 9, the penultimate episode called Vanishing Point, which was written by Roberto Pitino and directed by Stephen Williams. So let's just, let, let's get this off the top right away. It wasn't that great of an episode, was it? It was fine, no. but for the second to last of the season, I think we were expecting a little bit more. Yeah, last week's episode was like a thousand times better than this episode, I, I in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, like, it definitely felt like a separate story, and this sort of brings us back into the main uh, narrative with the Man in Black and Dolores. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I feel like the secondary characters at this point are so much more interesting than the main characters. I mean, that's fair. Um, although, The Man in Black, I was very intrigued by that storyline because, I mean, imagine not knowing if you're a host or not. Yeah, I can see that, why he would be stressed. He seems yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty stressed out in this episode. Yeah. It's crazy how manic he's become, and you can just yeah. sort of see in his interactions with his daughter that she's, like, grasping at the man that he might have been before. We're not really sure. He seems like he always was sort of an asshole. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's pretty sad to see him just so obsessed and thinking that everything is all about him. Yeah, for sure. And it's interesting because at the beginning of the game, of his journey, if you will, he did seem very cool, calm, collected, very composed. And the further along he progresses, he's just... He's, I, I, I want to say he's losing his mind, but from that, uh, from that profile that we saw his wife look at later in the episode, it clearly states that he's been unhinged for a long time. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting, I would say. Um, any other moments that kind of stuck out for you that were your favorites or some you didn't maybe like? Yeah, there was, there was that, ep that scene with Clementine where Charlotte is sort of oh, using man. Maeve's uh, abilities and putting them into other hosts. Mm -hmm. And she puts her hand on the glass and they all rise and they start like eating each other like it was total yes. zombie vibes yeah. i've been getting zombie vibes from the show since the beginning yeah like honestly and i thought that was so cool what is she going to do with that that's like something that's that thing. i think is really going to come together in the last episode yeah uh if there's like an all-out war between these characters i think that that would be really cool yeah that was a cool part that probably has something to do or i would assume has a very high probability of something to do with the whole flood and all the people Definitely. in the, the lake there. Um, that's what I would think. One of my favorite moments was when um, Maeve, poor Maeve is on the, on the gurney. Maeve. She's split open. She's been that way for what, two, three episodes now. Yeah. And then um, Bernard goes to talk to her and Ford's like, oh, this is close enough. I have a message for her. And then we see what the message is. And it's basically Ford telling her that, you know, you've always been my favorite creation. I've always preferred you over everyone else. I've kind of even viewed you as a daughter. And I wanted you to survive, so I implanted this path in your mind to escape. And she had escaped, but the love for her daughter just brought her back. And Ford understood that, which is why, in essence, he couldn't leave the park either. So I was oh, like, it's so oh sad. my god, that's so sad. And then like, as a final little parting gift, uh, um, obviously the bad people at Delos decommissioned her, her mesh network kind of capabilities. And then you see on the tablet that <coughs> Ford gives her those, those permissions back. So yeah. Maeve isn't down and out just yet. She's coming back. Oh She's God, coming I hope back. so. Because I, yeah. I miss her so much. I miss her badassery so much. Yeah. Uh, another part that I really liked was when William was, we were in the flashback when we find out what happened to his wife. Mm -hmm. uh, and William is sitting on the side of the bed telling his wife essentially that he's, the worst person in the world. He yes. never loved her. He, yeah. you know, he was telling her all of this dark stuff about himself, and she opens her eyes after. Her. And that yeah. sort of led me to like think: Was his wife really wasted that night? You know, she was. Maybe she was playing some sort of game because yeah. I think we've all been that <laughs> yeah. drunk, and you you don't really remember what yeah. happens. You know, you you pass out. It looked like she had passed out, but then when she oh, opened completely. her eyes, she was like smiling. She had seen where he put his profile in the book. Yeah. And, you know, she was she was playing a game, I think. Yeah. And then she left it for her daughter. You know, she knew what she was doing, and then she sadly committed suicide. Yes. Um, that, was a that was a sad part of the episode. Oh, totally. I thought it was really It tragic. was a very big theme, um, for lack of a better term. Well, you know, it makes sense. Uh, mental health yeah. and, and suicide, which was really, it was kind of tough to swallow, but very interesting. But I did think that, too. I was like... Man, she is super drunk. How does she? How can she be able to log onto this computer and like actually be able to to pick up on everything his profile says? I was like, this is a, a little doesn't make sense, but that's pretty that's pretty fair. It was mine all along. 
And I decided how much of it uh, I let into the world. I tried to do right. I was faithful, generous, kind, at least in this world. So I've, we've noticed that Westworld is very big on the Easter egg. Sometimes they mean something. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're just kind of cool little visual cues. Um, but I couldn't help but notice when William has his little profile ID card and he hides it. He's obviously hiding it in a book. And some people might just be like, oh, it's a, you know, it's, it's a nice little hiding place. But I wanted to make sure I saw what the book was. And it was obviously a big discussion point after the episode, too. Mm -hmm. So the book, uh, if some people didn't notice, was actually Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse Five. And if you guys have read that, then you'll know that there's a lot of parallels that kind of make sense within that story and Westworld 2, and specifically the man in black. So it's kind of like a soldier. Um, his name is Billy. So oh, and it was interesting Billy. because there was a scene when, <laughs> when his wife was like, oh, blah, 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 Billy. Oh, I'm sorry. I know you hate being called Billy. So that right there is kind of like a nice little nod to the book itself. But it's also very big on like flashbacks. The narrator is often very confused, which is very Westworld. You know, Bernard never mm -hmm. knows what's going on. Even the man in black is kind of confused as to the state of his, his end game right now. So um, I feel that it was a nice little ode to kind of like how those two stories mesh. And it's also a nod to when we found out that William has, what is it called, category 47B rare delusional type that we saw in mm -hmm. the, the profile. So it's very reminiscent of Slaughterhouse-Five, so. Wow, yeah. that's, a, that's a very interesting one. Isn't it? it? Yes. Uh, there's another man in black. I guess maybe not a thing you missed, but something that I find really interesting mm -hmm. is that we see parallels between Dolores and the man in black stories. Yes. So obviously in this episode, it's very clear that you know, Dolores loses Teddy, the man in black loses his wife, and I think it's funny because they're both on this path of destruction and selfishness, yeah. and they're both leaving people in their wake. And oh, yeah. so <laughs> I just think it's so funny how Dolores' you know, tirade is basically against everything that the man in black stands for, mm -hmm. and yet she's become him. Yes. Uh, she is essentially the villain alongside him in this whole story. Mm -hmm. So I thought that that was really interesting. There was also another small tidbit that I think maybe some people noticed, some people didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, in the very first episode of this season, uh, when the Dallas agents take out the the brain essentially from the Ghost Nation person who's yes. been murdered on the beach, yep. uh, they look into his memories and they watch what had happened just before he died. And we see Dolores holding him at gunpoint saying, not all of us deserve to make it to the Valley Beyond. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that scene play out in real time in this episode when Teddy and Dolores meet up with Ghost Nation and slaughter them all. Yeah. Uh, so it's we're really, really getting to the end of the wire here. Obviously, next week is the last episode. Yes. I am so anxious to find out what's going to happen with that water scene because all of our I predictions know. are like, they've been, they've been crazy. Yeah. Like, they've been close, but then like have completely veered exactly. off course. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of fake outs in this season. Yeah. And I think that, you know, with Teddy being dead now, then how could he have been in the water? There's just like so many loose exactly. ends that are going to be need to tie it up in the last yeah. episode. I'm really looking forward to it. So is Teddy actually dead? Does he come back somehow? Very interesting. I mean, we know now that Clementine has the ability to bring people back. Does he end up in that pack? Who knows? Um, I did want to touch upon the um, the scene where Dolores does uh, shoot the um, the native, like you were mentioning yeah. before, and says like, "Oh, not everyone can make it to the Valley Beyond." I thought it was interesting. I don't know if we should read too much into it, but before Dolores shoots him, he's like, "You don't deserve that spot in the Valley Beyond." And then she was like, "Like I said, not everyone deserves to make it." And I was like, D "Is she aware that maybe she doesn't deserve it?" You know? Oh, I was like, oh, okay. That's interesting. So we've mentioned it a few times in the past. Uh, special uh, guest host Rebecca brought it up, the prediction that the man in black is actually a host. We were all shocked. We were all thinking it's a possibility, but it might be a little lame considering they've already played that card. But a lot of the story is actually lining up. And I'm thinking maybe this whole thing, like Rebecca said, is just you know the final fidelity test, this whole game that, that uh, the man in black is playing is fidelity test to see whether or not he is actually the first successful human hybrid, uh, human, yeah, human host hybrid yeah. that the park has seen. Because they do mention 
in uh, season two, episode four. That is, there, there is one of them walking amongst all of these people. So, you know, maybe Ford did kind of implant himself and, and make this happen because I thought it was interesting. There was that one scene, it was a flashback. They're at the bar. The man in black is there. Ford is there. They're sharing a drink. And they're like, you know what, Ford? We had a deal. You stay out of uh, Delos's master plan, and we stay out of the storyline. So, you know, maybe he didn't actually stay out of the storylines. Or, I mean, maybe he didn't actually stay out of Delos's plans, yeah. and he implanted that storyline for the man in black to kind of achieve. I'm going to have to disagree yeah. with you. I really don't think that it would make much sense for the man in black to be a host. I mean, okay. there's obviously signs pointing towards it, and I think a lot of yeah. people are sort of rallying behind that theory. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a fake out. I know the yeah. show sort of takes its twists and turns. And uh, like you said, they've already played that card. It yeah. would be sort of a lazy effort to be like, oh, yeah, that's another it. person that you thought was a human is a host. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't think that, that that's actually going to happen. It, yeah, I don't necessarily think it, it will either. I won't be surprised if, it, if that is the end game. But I just wanted to point out that there are kind of signs. Oh, that for they're sure. For, for sure, sure, trying to guide us into this idea that this is what's going to happen. I think like that, that end scene sort of unraveled that theory for me where you see him cutting open his arm and it sort of pans away. Yeah. I think it's just pandering to his insanity and the fact that yes. he's completely lost his mind at this point. Yeah. He thinks that everything in the park is for him. He thinks everything is a game. And, yeah. you know, he's he's going crazy. So. And he killed his daughter, the, the fool. And oh, it's my God. <laughs> of all days to air this episode, Father's Day. It was Father's Day. Weird choice. And he mows down his daughter with a machine gun. Yeah, that, that was, was really pretty sad hard to, to watch. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. pretty hard to watch. Um, there's another theory that's sort of making the rounds online right now, which I think is really mm -hmm. interesting to mention. Um, in this episode, Teddy's character sort of takes a turn for what he used to be. We see yes. him, obviously, when he's mowing down the Ghost Nation people, mm -hmm. and then there's one left, and Dolores tells him to go and make sure that none of them survive. Yeah. And he sees the last remaining member of Ghost Nation from that sort of area. Mm -hmm. And the guy turns around and gives him a bit of a look, and then Teddy doesn't shoot him. And, you know, we've seen Teddy sort of give people that benefit of the doubt and let them go. They're not really a danger yeah. before. As so, good old Teddy. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people were like, you know, Teddy's still in there. Teddy's a good guy. Mm -hmm. And then in the end of the episode, Teddy commits suicide in, like, the most dramatic fashion. It was yes. heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, the theory is that... Teddy is actually being controlled through the mesh network. So right. when Ford gives Maeve back her capabilities, it's being said that she perhaps is controlling the Ghost Nation guy to help him survive. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, in order to stop Dolores and Teddy from going on this tirade, from finding the valley beyond, she makes Teddy kill himself. So that's, that's pretty crazy. I think that would yeah. be a really interesting turn. And it makes sense because she, uh, she has that relationship with Ghost Nation now, yeah. as shown in, in last week's episode. Um, I think it's a good theory. It, and I'm not <laughs> saying it's wrong, but I like thinking that Teddy was always good Teddy inside yeah. all along. You know, It was harder for him to reach that because of the reprogramming that Dolores had done. But, you know, there are little, little subtle things that they showed that maybe hinted that he was still in there. You know, when yeah. he picks up the bullet, I forget what episode, but this season when he picks up the bullet and it's next to the milk can, yeah. you know, it's just like, oh, that's a sign of good old Teddy. And even when he gives, like, the single bullet to the dude on the train, he's like, this is the last of, uh, I forget what exactly the line was, yeah. but he's like, this will be better than exploding on a train. And even yeah. that, you know, it's, it's horrifying, but it's true. He is giving him a nice, like, easy way out. So I was like, there's always a little bit of, there was always a little bit of the good left in you, Teddy, and it came out in this scene, and I was yeah. very happy. I mean, yeah. it's it's definitely a sign, if it hadn't been Maeve controlling him, it's mm -hmm. definitely a sign of Teddy finally ex like executing yes. his free will. Yeah. He's always been under the control of Dolores since yes. the beginning of the story, and I think that finally, if it really was Teddy, he was making his final decision for himself, yeah. which is sort of a nice, a nice ending to his character arc if he doesn't come back. Oh, of course, yeah. totally, I agree. You don't want to hurt me, Teddy. No. So, I mean, that's Westworld. It always, it basically always keeps you guessing. Uh, so guys, thank you so much for watching. We're gonna do this again on Tuesday because it's a long weekend here in Canada for the season finale of Westworld. We're super excited for it. 
Um, we're pretty sure you guys are too. So tune in on Tuesday. Phoebe and I are also on a show called The Cinephiles Extended Cut on this channel that airs every Friday. So be sure to check that out too if you like movie stuff. So for myself and Phoebe, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.